morning, students. This is Mr. Xiao, and today I'm going to teach the skill of surprise for history source based questions. Um, so before I begin, make sure you have this set of notes with you, the surprise skill notes. And at any point, you may speed up, slow down, or pause this video to suit your learning pace. Um, surprise. So highlight the word surprise. Surprise is about expectations. And the word surprise, the skill surprise is actually very much the same as how you ordinarily understand surprise. Um, when you think of the word surprise, you might think of uh, birthday parties. And a surprise birthday party, presumably, is one in which the birthday boy or the birthday girl uh, didn't expect. It is something that came uh, as a bit of a shock, uh, hopefully a pleasant one. Uh, and so, so a surprise is something that's unexpected. Uh, conversely, uh, you are not surprised when you have expected something to happen. Uh, so there are two parts to this skill, actually, if you have realized that there is the something and there's the expectation. So the something, the something requires you to generate an inference from a source because we are talking about source-based skills here. If you are surprised by a source, right, you must first understand and elucidate what the source is saying before you can be surprised by it. Uh, in other words, you need the skill of inference. You need to infer from the source, establish what the source is trying to argue, and then interpret and interrogate that something uh, in order to determine whether you are surprised. So the first element of surprise is inference. Why is that something you are surprised by? The second element is um, the expectation. The expectation. Uh, and how to know whether you have expected or not expected something. Uh, let me give you um, an example that might make sense to, to, to you in this period. So we are talking about Nazi Germany, Hitler's rise to power in, in, in Weimar Germany to make it Nazi Germany. Uh, and suppose that in 1929, at the height of the, at the onset of the Great Depression, uh, suppose that Hitler makes a speech that says um, the Weimar government is, is corrupt, is, is a failure, uh, it's weak, democracy has failed, um, and, and you need a strong leader like the Nazis to, to bring Germany back to order and restore Germany's glory. Uh, would you be surprised by Hitler's speech criticizing the Weimar government? Or uh, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You have expected Hitler to say so. So in, in, in other words, um, there is some element of common sense in your expectations, but you can surprise uh, support that common sense with historical knowledge. Why do you expect Hitler to be criticizing the Weimar government? Because in fact, the Weimar government's structural weaknesses, uh, like proportional representation leading to the weak coalition governments, have left it in poor state to, 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 to steer Germany through a crisis. Uh, so you could say that. You could also point out the magnitude of the Great Depression, such that there were 6 million unemployed Germans by 1932. Uh, you could also point out Hitler and the Nazi party's ambitions for power, and that they have consistently railed against the Weimar system uh, through their 25 points. Uh, so, so there are multiple elements of historical, specific historical contextual details that you can give to, to, to supplement your argument that, well, it's no surprise Hitler is criticizing the Weimar government in 1929. Uh, so we are going to practice now in this worksheet with actual sources and how, how to write out, write out our surprise response in a way that elicits um, uh, a, good, a good level of achievement. Typical surprise questions would be, are you surprised by source A? Is what source B says about something surprising? Um, so let's highlight. The surprise question asks you to evaluate whether a source well, a source is unexpected. So if it's unexpected, you are surprised. It's surprising. Or whether it's expected. If it's expected, you are not surprised. It is unsurprising. Um, in other words, we must first understand what the source is saying. So there's a content inference. And then we will test this inference against our expectations. Uh, so we need to do a cross-reference. In this case... When what the source is saying is supported by what we know, we are not surprised. But if what the source is saying is contradicted by what we know, we are surprised. Uh, and so this will become much clearer as we do more examples. Finally, 
you have the option, the choice to evaluate the provenance of the source, to look at its purpose. Uh, typically, when you can understand the source's purpose and look at what the source argues in light of its purpose, uh, most of the time you will be unsurprised because what the source is saying is exactly what you wanted to achieve in the purpose. Uh, in a very rare few cases, you expected the source to have a certain purpose and the source said something that went against its, its supposed purpose and so you would be surprised. So our expectations are based on our contextual knowledge and the source's purpose or agenda. Typically, this is uh, what enables us to figure out if we are surprised by a source. So you are surprised when the source says something that's against your expectation. So it's contradicted by your contextual knowledge. Therefore, conversely, you are not surprised when it's in line with your expectation when it says something that is supported by your contextual knowledge. So this is the basic minimum level of response you need to give the examiner. That you look at the source, you tell the examiner what the source is saying, and then you tell the source whether or not you are surprised because what the source has said is either supported or contradicted by your contextual knowledge. This is the minimum level of response required for this skill. And if you wanted to go further, you look at its purpose. When the source says something that's not aligned with its purpose, you are surprised because it's gone against what, what you think it wants to achieve. This is very rare. This is very rare. On the other hand, um, the, source, the sources usually will say something that is aligned with its purpose. And usually, when you analyze the purpose of a source, in the end, you are not surprised. So we will look at these examples. Let's proceed. Did the Nazis rise to power because the Weimar Republic was weak? Uh, this is chapter 2a, the weaknesses of the Weimar coupled with the rise of the Nazis. During the 1920s, the Weimar Republic faced many problems that threatened its existence. Uh, oh, before I continue, because the Weimar Republic was weak, maybe we can write a few notes here. So the structural weaknesses of Weimar, we call that we have proportional representation leading to weak coalition governments. This is one. Right, we had 20 governments in 14 years. And we also had Article 48 that gave the president emergency powers. So these are existing weaknesses of Weimar that we know about. We're going to scribble it at the side because this will be helpful when we want to use our knowledge to evaluate the sources. Okay. Um, the Treaty of Versailles, we, we said that um, by signing the Treaty of Versailles, it gave a stink to the Weimar Republic that the leaders of Weimar could never really escape from. Uh, it always was a thorn in the side, a weakness that Hitler exploited to no end. Uh, political violence, so these are the clashes in the street between the, the tubs of, of the far right and the far left. Uh, hyperinflation, this was 1923. As you recall, uh, and the French invasion of the Ruhr. This was also 1923, and they were intertwined, as you recall, because uh, the French in invaded, the, occupied the Ruhr, the German workers stopped working, they went on strike. Uh, the Weimar government tried to pay the German workers uh, for going on strike, pay them for doing nothing uh, by printing German money. Uh, the printing of German money rapidly reduced its value. It, it, it led to the, the hyperinflation. Uh, the Munich puts, and this is also 1923. 1923 is a, is a very dramatic year for the Weimar Republic. It was a potential tipping point, but Weimar survived. Well, the Republic survived. Uh, and in 1929, it seemed to overcome its problems, but then the Great Depression started, and, and Weimar was smashed irretrievably to, to bits by the Nazis. Okay. So, so the background information has solved. 
told the story in broad strokes that you already know. Source A, Hitler's during his imprisonment. So let's start by looking at the, the question. Study Source A. Are you surprised by what Source A says uh, about the Nazis' new political strategy? Explain your answer. So this question has a focus. The focus is the Nazis' new political strategy. I need to read the source to find out what the source says about this uh, focus before I figure out if I have expected it, if it's unexpected, and therefore if uh, I'm not surprised or if I'm surprised. Um, so let's look at the source. Hitler doing his imprisonment. This is 924. What does Hitler say? Uh, when I resume active work, it will be necessary to follow a new policy. Aha, so there is a new strategy. We can't get power by armed conspiracy. Unfortunately, we'll have to work to enter the Reichstag against the Catholic and Marxist deputies. So here is the new strategy. Uh, you might be a bit perplexed if you don't have enough knowledge of this time. Uh, this tells you that Hitler is saying he wants to get elected to power rather than seizing power through violence. Um, okay. So if you are not sure about this, go read your textbook. Before 1924 and 1923, Right, the Munich Beer Hall puts was Hitler trying to seize power through armed rebellion. Uh, it this fails, and so now he says, "Well, since vi illegal violence is not working, we're going to have used illegal or uh, electoral methods to gain power through the democratic system. Outvoting them will take longer than outshooting them, but at least our victory will be ensured by their own constitution." So this sentence gives you another clue as to what Hitler's strategy is, which is. Uh, win power through elections. Any lawful process is slow, but already we have 32 Reichstag deputies and sooner or later we will have the majority and after that we shall have Germany. Uh, the only clue you need, to, you, you need here is that the word Reichstag, the term Reichstag refers to the German parliament during the Weimar period and also during the Nazi period. So uh, elections happen, uh, elections are held to to choose the leaders of Germany to be put into this Reichstag. And this German parliament will then pick the, the councillor, the right councillor, and the councillor is the German prime minister. Okay. So let's look at the, the, the question. Um, the Nazis' new political strategy. What is the strategy? The strategy is that they wanted to win power by being elected, by winning elections. This is the strategy. So I hope it comes out for you in the source that you can understand the source is saying that the Nazis' new strategy is to win control. I'm going to start by inviting you actually to think, without looking at the answers, to think about whether or not you would be surprised by, by, this, by this claim that the Nazis want to win power through elections. And in fact, my worksheet will give you uh, responses, valid responses for both surprise and not surprise. But I want you to think for yourself which side you would pick and why. And after you, you have intuited, instinctively picked the side, whether or not you are surprised, can you marshal, scribble down at the side of your worksheet any two to three historical facts that support your stand? This is, in fact, the way you would approach a surprise question. So, so in this case, I, I, I gave first a box for surprise. And because I want to go first with a box for surprise, I need to be able to contradict this inference. So how do I contradict? How do I challenge? How do I oppose this idea that the Nazis are legal? Uh, are, are, are playing nice, are playing by the rules, are going to win elections, I need to talk about the illegal violence. That is how I contradict the inference. And what illegal stuff do I know? It was the Munich beer hall puts where the Nazis rallied their followers in the city of Munich to try to overthrow the government there. They also always used the Sturm Abeling, the 
brown shirts to go around beating up their political opponents on the street. That's the whole point of the street violence that was mentioned though background information. So the fact that the Nazis were were violent, were thugs, were even tried an arm uprising to overthrow the, the Weimar government, doesn't that demonstrate that the Nazis were illegal, violent uh, organizers to start with? So so what they're saying about winning elections peacefully and legally, that is shocking based on this particular set of historical details and facts. So this would be how you write a surprise answer. And at this point, could I invite you to pause the video and think about how you would write uh, a not surprise answer in the same vein. So, so the technique, the writing technique is ATQ, uh, the inference, the evidence, and the cross-reference. So if you ATQ with surprise, your cross-reference has to be contradicted. And if you ATQ with not surprise, your cross reference would be supported. So, so can I can you pause the video and think about how you would try writing this same question, but with a not surprise stand? And I will hope I hope that you tried it. So let me go through. On the next page. Again, the same question. Study source A. Are you surprised by what this source says about the Nazis' new political strategy? Explain your answer. So this time, I want to go with the... The not surprise approach. The not surprise approach. The inference stays the same. The source has said the same thing. Which is that the Nazi strategy was to win control of Germany gradually, legally, by getting elected to power, as opposed to the violence of the past. And here I will continue with the not surprise answer. Let me just conceal this for a moment. I'll continue with not surprise answer. I'm not surprised because it is what the source says. It is supported. So this is how I would go about doing the cross-reference for not surprise. I need to find some historical facts, details that, that agree with, support, uh, and also highlight that the strategy is indeed now electoral, uh, electoral approach. How do I know that? So I start with the logic, right? The common sense that, that Hitler now is going to use the electoral system but I need more, I need more, I need facts, I need historical details that, that really flesh out my knowledge and show the examiner that I know what I'm talking about, uh, that makes this a strong argument. So we know that the Nazis went into the 1924-1928 Reichstag elections. This is important because the fact that the Nazis are participating shows that they have a new game plan. The Nazis gained enormous support in the 932 elections with 230 deputies elected in June. So this is also important. It shows that their new game plan is working. Indeed, gradually the Nazis are seizing control of Weimar Germany. And this all concludes in 1933 January when Hitler becomes the German Chancellor. So, so Hitler's strategy has paid off very handsomely within nine years. The new strategy has succeeded in less than a decade for Hitler to seize ultimate power uh, for now, in, in Germany, we know that he then creates more levels of power that were was unthinkable before. So, can I get you to pause and look at this response and see that, in fact, this response is equally valid and of the same thinking level as the surprise response. In both surprise and not surprise, the strategy and the technique was the same. You first infer from the source based on the question focus. The question said, are you surprised by what the source says on the political strategy? Uh, you responded by inferring about the political strategy. And then looking at the inference, you paused and you meditated. You thought, you know, do I agree? Am I surprised? Or do I disagree? Am I not surprised? What, what do I know to, to uh, support or contradict this inference? And then you marshal the relevant historical details to support your, your stand. 
Uh, and, and both responses are fine. The, the key in this lesson so far is to understand that the technique for a surprise answer is make sure you understand the source, infer from the source, think about what knowledge you have to support or contradict that inference, and therefore decide your stand. Are you, are you not surprised or are you surprised by the source? Okay. So far, so good. Minimum ATQ inference cross-reference. These are the steps for surprise. Minimum. But what if you wanted to go a bit higher? You would think about the purpose, the purpose of this source. Um, so here Hitler is talking in 1924 to a Nazi party member. He's, uh, since he's talking in confidence, he's likely wanting to convince this Nazi party member. So, so what, what does Hitler want? What's his purpose? Um, well, we know that in this time, the Nazi party was very violent, full of brown shirts. Uh, and Hitler is probably having to rein in the hot hits and say, this, this is not working. We need to find a new way to power so that we can guarantee our own success. Uh, and and he, this is Hitler's desired outcome, right? Hitler wants to convince the Nazi party member, most likely, that, that they need to follow this new strategy that he has thought out so that the Nazis can, can, can stop their violence for now, conceal their talents and claws, uh, and pursue a more successful strategy in order to gain ultimate power. Uh, if that is Hitler's agenda, then, then you really shouldn't be surprised that Hitler is, is giving all these new ideas to the Nazi party member. Why would Hitler have this agenda? Uh, in fact, the hint is right here. After the failed Munich puts Hitler's learning from experience, he realizes that violence has, has, has failed him. It is not working. Uh, and if he really wants to be a serious politician in Germany right now, he, he needs to, a new game plan. So if that is Hitler's purpose, then this source is really in line with what he wants, which is to gain power, and therefore you are not surprised at all by this source. So let's look at how we would write it. So how you would write this, and this paragraph in many ways is, is a, equivalent to a standalone paragraph. You just, you go with the stand. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because it fits his agenda, his political agenda. What exactly is his purpose? Well, Hitler wants to convince the Nazi party the member's going to bring Hitler's words back to the party, the Nazi party, convince the Nazi party that we have a new strategy. It is to win control by being elected. Notice that this message is exactly the inference of the source that we were doing before. Right? So verb, audience message, this is done so that the Nazi party will change their strategy and adopt legal means to, to win power. And thus Hitler has a more secure path, thus Hitler can eventually become the leader of Germany. Coming from the context of 1924, which is where this source is from, Hitler was in jail because the Nazis' attempt at gaining power through the 1923 Munich, Beer Hall puts, was a failure. And so Hitler planned to win elections instead. It's a more steady path to power. And since the source fits Hitler's political agenda to win power, it is expected, and so you are not surprised. This would be the highest level response where you detail Hitler's purpose and then you demonstrate why the source fits his purpose, it is expected, and therefore you're not surprised. So this is the highest level response. All right, let's try um, one more practice. Okay, so I think maybe I'll, I'll try uh, source B and then we are done for today. Um, study source B. Is source B surprising in its view of the Weimar government? Its view of the Weimar government. Notice I'm highlighting this because it is the question focus. I should have done this earlier. Uh, please always highlight and label the question focus. We have taught you this in set one. So, so please do it because it is important for you to respond to the focus. And when, it, when the word, the focus has words like view, impact, or attitude, you know that you minimally want to interpret whether it's a positive or negative. This has to come out. 
whenever the focus has the word view, impact, attitude, you need to tell me whether or not it's positive or negative. So let's read the source carefully to find out what is the view. It's a declaration by, by the Nazis in 1928. So you already have a suspicion. You already have expectation. You know the Nazis are likely to, to, to criticize the Weimar government. You know that high chance is going to be a negative view. Okay. The problems of agriculture are born of the political misery of the whole German people. Corrupt republic and weak government are unable to overcome Germany's ill emergency. Aha. So this is exactly what you are looking for. The word republic here certainly refers to the Weimar Republic. Weak government certainly here refers to the weak coalition government. Let us do away with this system that has made our homeland powerless, without honour defenceless, that has turned us free Germans, farmers and middle class into poor misused slaves of the world economic system. So in other words, get rid of Weimar. Let us do away with those parties that deceive us because they stand politically with those who have caused all this misery by accepting the DOS plans. We see in the na National Socialist Movement, this is, or you can annotate at the side, this is the Nazis. They are talking about the Nazis. The only salvation from this pathetic and cowardly policy. So Weimar, in other words, has screwed everything up. Weimar has made a huge mess uh, and really, yo, your, your best bet, German people, your best bet is the Nazis. Um, that's what the Nazis say. Um, and you're not surprised, right? Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's start with the view. We need to respond. Clearly, this is a, a negative view. Let's infer. What, why is it negative? What, what is wrong with the Weimar government? Uh, corrupt republic and weak government are able to overcome German's German political and economic emergency. The Weimar government has failed, failed to lead Germany effectively and solve its problems, causing massive suffering and unhappiness. And and misery among the masses. Maybe we can add the word economic. Misery among the masses. So this, this I think, would be a great inference for you to start off with, right? There's a negative view. It's criticizing the Weimar government for its failures. Uh, it can't solve the Germany's problems. It has made people suffer and, and, and be miserable uh, it, due to its policy failures. Um, notice that when I infer, I am using the source without lifting from the source. This is very important. Notice that when I infer, I'm taking the main ideas of the source and I'm using my own words to explain them. Because the words from the source go into my evidence. Evidence. Okay. So it looks like my answer table wants to go with surprising. And I think I know why. So before we go there, can you pause and, and take a moment to think about what contextual knowledge you might have in 1928 about Weimar that would lead you to be surprised by this idea that Weimar is a huge failure, has caused massive suffering, uh, and people are, are just living, living very poorly. What contextual knowledge might you have? I think, okay, for those of you who have gone through my lessons, there is this graph that I love showing you. This one. And it's precisely this graph that shows different movements of Germany. So 25 to 28 under Weimar, the German economy, this is representing the average German income over time. In other words, the higher the better because a German person has more money. Um, 925-28, the average income of German people is, is rising. It's rising. In other words, people are becoming richer in this time period of German history. In other words, the Weimar government is in fact succeeding and German people's lives are getting better. So in 1928, <sighs> 
German people look back at the last four years and they say Weimar has done a pretty good job. That should be your your knowledge, your knowledge, because this is the period of the golden age of Weimar leadership under Gustav Stressman that solves many economic and foreign policy problems, not least the hyperinflation. It is after 1929 that the German economy tanks tremendously, and this is the Great Depression. This is the Great Depression. And after 1933, the, the German economy rises again, and this is the Nazi period, the Nazi rule in Germany. Right, so this is a really elegant, elegant graph that, that summarizes movements of Weimar and Nazi history, German history. First, interwar German history. First is the, the, the golden age period for Weimar, right here until 929. Then it's the Great Depression all the way down. And at the at sort of the pit of the Great Depression, Hitler comes to power. Um, and very fortunately so, because the economy was already turning around, Hitler sort of benefited from 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 the suffering and could claim credit for when the economy made a made a turnaround under the Nazis. Okay. So so you have you have the knowledge. The knowledge is that in fact in 1928 the people of Weimar looking back at four years of golden age. So it's not that the Weimar have failed. You want to try this writing writing this on your own first. Oh, I don't think so. Never mind. It's not that Weimar have failed, it's that Weimar has succeeded. So therefore, source B is surprising because it is contradicted by my contextual knowledge. To, to be really safe, to be really safe, you want to respond with the, the, the negative view with your positive view. Positive view, right? Why? Because Gustav Stressman led Weimar Germany into the golden age that he solved the problem of hyperinflation with the DOS plan and the rental mark, that incomes of the German people were rising throughout the golden age period. So really, really, uh, in many ways, 928 Germans were very thankful for Weimar. So this is a solid, a solid response. ATQ, inference, cross-reference. And the cross-reference to your knowledge is very easy, very direct, because we know about the golden age of Weimar from 25 to 28. So surprising would be the natural, easy way to go towards this source if you were to cross-reference to your knowledge, right? The source has a negative view. It says Weimar has failed, 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 failed. But in 928, your head tells you, no, it succeeded, succeeded, succeeded. Yet, when I look at this question, okay, the Nazi declaration criticizing Weimar, negative view, yet something in your heart really screams, not surprised. Nazis, of course, they're going to criticize Weimar to bits. That part of your heart that's screaming, not surprised, is not your contextual knowledge, it's your understanding of the Nazis' purpose. The Nazis want to criticize Weimar. They have always been criticizing Weimar. They have a political purpose and agenda in criticizing Weimar. And so, and so there is a highest level answer here. And let's look at how it is written. However, right, ultimately, source B is not surprising. Ultimately, in the end, it is not surprising because it fits the Nazis' political agenda. It fits the Nazis' political agenda. What is this agenda? They want to convince the German people, right? This source of the Nazi declaration is going to go out to all the German public. It wants to tell the German people that the Weimar government has failed. It, it has led to great suffering among the German people. The Weimar government is a complete mess. It's, it's, it's not working. And what would the German people do? The German people would, would oppose the weak Weimar coalition governments and instead support the Nazi party to solve Germany's problems. Thus, so outcome, recall from your purpose lessons, outcome is audience action going to final result. Outcome is audience action going to final result. My audience here is the German people. My audience, the German people will take an action the actions that they oppose Weimar and support the Nazis. So the final result is thus, the Nazi party
would win more votes and elections, gaining power in the Reichstag to form a Nazi government and control Germany. This is the Nazis' final desired result. That's exactly what they want. Coming from the context of 1928, the Nazis' party strategy, we know now they want to win elections. They needed to rally support by criticizing the Weimar government. And since it fits the Nazis' political agenda, it is expected to have that negative view. So maybe here, let's insert the word negative view. Is expected, and thus I am not surprised. Not surprised. And so I have taught you, and, and so and so it is clear now that the agenda of this source is very much aligned to what it's saying, its negative view. Right? And if you can explain the agenda so clearly through the purpose, the VAMO, then and, and realize that what it's saying is exactly what it wants to achieve which is to make the German people oppose Weimar and support the Nazis so Nazis can win votes and elections and so Nazis will gain power. If you can see through their agenda and explain it clearly and demonstrate why you are not surprised, you will achieve the highest level. But if you are not sure about the agenda, you can always... You can always rely on the cross-reference level. And the cross-reference level is very viable as well. So if you are not sure about the agenda, you can rely on a cross-reference level. And a cross-reference level is also a very viable response. In fact, this is the minimum response required. Um, to, conclude, to conclude, two things. First, for every surprise question, identify the focus. Read the source to look for the focus. Identify the focus. Read the source to look for the focus. Uh, and, and then test and figure out whether or not your knowledge can support or contradict that, that message and inference from the source. If your knowledge supports the inference, you are not surprised. If your knowledge, in this case of Weimar's Golden Age, if your knowledge contradicts the inference of the negative view that the Weimar government has failed, then you are surprised. So this is your first minimum response level. Um, you can also cross-reference to other source. You don't need to use your knowledge all the time. Uh, and this technique I will teach in class with the later sources in this worksheet. So first, minimally, do ATQ, inference, cross-reference. need to know these three steps. And for those of you who can see through the purpose of the source, you can figure out whether or not what the source is aligned to the purpose. You can also try to explain the purpose answer. All right, I've gone through the surprise skill today. I hope you have understood. Surprise is about expectations. Uh, we can figure out what, what we expect through our own contextual knowledge and through the source's purpose. And we need to test the source's inference against that our knowledge to in the end conclude if we are surprised or not surprised. Uh, that's the lesson for today. Have a good day ahead, Upper Sex History students.